Hello, I'm Sean Kelly, Director of Marketing at Brooks Equipment. And today I'm going to be interviewing Steve Morrow, Director of Sales at Brooks Equipment. Um, Steve has been doing a lot of our interviews with customers, and we thought it would be nice for you to hear his perspective. Steve has quite a bit of experience in the industry. Um, Steve, thanks so much for coming on with us and, and sharing your experience. Hey, thanks, Sean. It's, it's good to be on with you, and it's, it's definitely a little different uh, being asked the questions instead of asking the questions. But uh, yeah, I, I had 30 years in the fire equipment distributor end of the business, uh, starting back in the very late 70s. We won't get uh, specific with the times, but uh, you know, I've uh, started out servicing portable fire extinguishers and I expanded my services on to you know, emergency exit lights and alarms and sprinklers and then um, management role with the company. Um, and I've spent some time with one of the national companies and have my own FED business. So about uh, 2010 or so, I uh, made a change and came to Brooks Equipment. It's been a, it's been a good run. Okay, wonderful. Well, I'm, I'm definitely glad you're at Brooks. Um, so Steve, um, now, as you know, is a challenging time um, for fire equipment distributors. Um, an, an, an unprecedented time. Um, why don't you walk us through if you were if you were still in business as your own, you know, your own distributor. Tell us about what would be some of your strategies. Well, looking at from that angle, uh, you know, I would obviously I'd be thinking about uh, my communication and communication with my bank and my suppliers and and any of my service providers. I'd I'd, conf I'd communicate with them on uh, where I am with my business, what some of my goals are to get rolling again, and uh, keep the line of communication open with them. With my employees, I would definitely keep the line of communication open, um, letting them know what my plans are, or what our plans are to move forward in this time, and how we're gonna get back to work full time if we're not already there. Um, just make them feel connected. And then my customers, I would obviously uh, um, prioritize my customers and, and make sure I'm communicating with them via phone calls or emails or whatever I need to do. I'd keep that communication line open with my customers and let them know that, you know, if their business is shut down, some of the important things that they have to do to prepare to reopen would be the maintenance and inspection of their life safety systems. Well, lastly, I, I, I would think that, uh, you know, we have a fleet of vehicles. And if I had some people that were taking some time off work, I would make sure to get all the maintenance items up to date with the vehicles. So, you know, the last thing I want to do is get my full uh, team of uh, service technicians back and, and in the first week realize that the trucks need oil changes or the tires need replaced or there's something with the vehicle. So I'd get my fleet up to snuff and, and ready to roll back in that full-time action. Okay, so what I hear you saying is you prioritize communication, but more specifically to your employees, to your suppliers, and to your customers. And then, you know, as things open back up, don't forget about the maintenance so that everyone's ready to do the work, you know, so that they're not delayed. Absolutely. And the maintenance goes right down into your, your service shops. You know, you have equipment that you're using for either hydrostatic testing or recharging and make sure all the, the service work has been done to that piece of equipment. So as, again, as you're rolling full steam again, you're not having equipment breakdown. Okay, great. So as, as the country opens back up at different stages, depending on what state or even city you're in, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a backlog of work to be done. And so I think it's important that the FEDs communicate to their customers that, you know, you can't just run straight to open business as normal unless people and property are safe. Right. Uh, so how, how do you think they can effectively get that message across? Well, Sean, one of the, uh, when I had my own fire equipment business, I also provided uh, exhaust hood cleaning. So it was a norm, you know, we had seven crews that went out and cleaned at night. Uh, thinking back on that, and, and these times of businesses uh, preparing to reopen, you know, it may not be a bad idea to switch some of your hours around. So maybe you are providing some portable inspections and emergency light inspections 
after normal business hours. You know, for restaurant systems, uh, you know, in cleaning hoods, you're, you're always doing that when the restaurant's closed. And, and same with the restaurant uh, fire suppression system service. You know, that's a, that's a nighttime th uh, service that's done a lot of times after hours. So, you know, I would, I would kind of look at things uh, with an uh, open mind as far as traditionally, yes, we've, we're servicing portable fire extinguishers from 8 in the morning till 5 o'clock. But if you have an opportunity to go in there after normal business hours, I'm sure your, your technicians won't mind because they want to get back to work full time. That's great. That's good advice, Steve. Well, Steve, to conclude, why don't you share some kind of last words of encouragement? I, yeah, I, I think, you know, remember the basic fundamentals. You know, we go out there, we work hard. Uh, we take the safety precautions for our employees with the proper PPE and uh, just keep pounding, you know, hang in there tough and, and, you know, just work hard. And it always pays off in the end. There's no shortcuts, Sean, and I think you know that in, in any business and especially a fire equipment uh, business. We, uh, you know, we provide protect lives and, and, and protect property. And we got to just get back to the basic fundamentals of working hard and taking care of our customers. Well, thank you, Steve. We appreciate your time. And thank you to everyone who's been watching this video. We hope you found it useful. As a reminder, you can find videos like this one on our COVID-19 page at brooksequipment.com forward slash COVID-19 forward slash. Thank you.